Welcome to the Lippert Technical Institute. I'm Charlie and I'll be your technical trainer. Today we're going to be replacing this old RV gas furnace with a brand new Furion gas furnace. Now, furnaces are measured in BTU rating and it's necessary to understand what's currently installed before I can make a recommendation. So let's go inside the RV and take a look at the box behind this panel and see what that rating is so I can make a decent recommendation. Finding your furnace inside the RV, you'll probably look underneath your sink, underneath your oven, maybe underneath your refrigerator, or in this case, underneath a couch. So let's go ahead and remove these cushions so I can get access to it. Replacing a furnace is like any appliance in your RV. There are different sizes for different applications. So there are a few inspection steps and sizing requirements that you need to take into consideration before installation. First, how large is your coach and how much total living space are you dealing with? This will dictate the BTU rating of your furnace. Second, what is the makeup and size of your ducting? and current furnace inlet. This will verify that you have enough open duct area to move the warm air from the new furnace to your living space. Now, it's a common practice to take the size BTU rating of your current furnace and just replicate that with your new furnace. However, your RV's history may be an unknown. Maybe somebody made a modification and added a slide out or possibly crushed a vent so thoroughly inspecting and documenting what you have currently is an important step in the replacement process. To figure out what furnace you have currently in your unit, you have a couple different things that you can do. You can look at your OEM spec sheet and that's gonna give you the original engineer's design on what size furnace is necessary. And you can also look at the label on the furnace itself and what you're looking for is the word input BTU. That's going to be, that's going to give you the overall size of the furnace. And for this one, we have 25,000. So we know that this is a 25,000 BTU furnace, and we're going to utilize a couple other different math equations and inspections in conjunction with that information to make a good recommendation. To properly recommend the right size furnace for the RV you're working on, you utilize length times width times 125. That's going to give you a translated number for your BTU level. Now, for this example, we're utilizing this RV with a slide out. So let's do the regular living space first. So we have a 25 foot by eight foot RV times 125 comes up with 25,000. Then we have a 10 foot slide out times the four foot width of the slide out times 125 comes up with 5,000. You add those two together and that's gonna give you your total living space for your RV. And that equates to 30,000 and that's what we're gonna recommend for your BTU level. There are two types of duct work a unit can have, a round flexible ducting or a rectangular rigid ducting. By finding the furnace appliance inside the RV, you can establish which type of ducting a unit may have. We're gonna take a look at how we measure different size furnaces for different size duct work. So for this installation, the 20,000 BTU recommendation will need a rigid rectangular duct work that's minimum 25 inch area of that opening and for the flexible, we'll also have the 25 inch. This next installation, it's 36 inches, and for the last one, it's 48 inches, and that's that open duct area that we're looking for. For the flexible round hoses, you'll want on this installation at least two ducts, three ducts on this one, and four ducts on the fifth wheel. To right size a brand new furnace for your RV, you need to take into consideration the overall size and living space inside the RV and the environment the coach will actually be camping in. With that information, now you can figure out exactly what size BTU furnace is necessary for your coach. The 
first step in removing the furnace is to remove this exhaust pipe. Next, we need to remove these four screws and remove this face plate. Now we can remove this trim piece by removing these screws all the way around the edge. Now that we have all of those trim piece screws out, there are six more in this particular model that hold the housing of the furnace into the trim piece. Now we can go ahead and remove this trim piece. To finish up the removal process, we just need to remove this gas line and a couple screws on the inside. First, remove the gas line from the gasket and move it out of the way. Then, remove the two screws holding the rear of the furnace to the floor. Disconnect all the wiring leading to the furnace by either removing the connectors or just cutting the wire. Now go ahead and remove the furnace from the mounting position. Now that the furnace is removed, you can see that we have rectangular rigid duct work that is mounted under the floor and inside the underbelly. And if you look closely, you can see that there's an attachment with a platform that the furnace sits on and that feeds the air into the plenum. Now we've established that we have a rigid rectangular type duct work inside this RV. And you can see if I pulled that out of the RV, you'd see this T with a plenum here and an open area where the furnace sits on top and blows that hot air down the ductwork and out of the vents. That's one installation, but you could also see a flexible type ductwork that hooks up to the furnace through these circles here and runs this flexible tubing out throughout the RV and out the vents. That's your two different types of duct installations. But today, we're gonna to be working with this one. So for our final assessment, we're gonna take a look at how we measure different size furnaces for different size duct work. So for this installation, the 20,000 BTU recommendation, we'll need a rigid rectangular duct work that's minimum 25 inch area of that opening. And for the flexible, we'll also have the 25 inch. This next installation, it's 36 inches. And for the last one, it's 48 inches. And that's that open duct area that we're looking for. For the flexible round hoses, you'll want on this installation, at least two ducts, three ducts on this one, and four ducts on the fifth wheel. So let's go back inside the RV and measure the furnace inlet and the mounting surface to make sure that the new furnace will properly mount to the floor. A part of the inspection is to understand how much open duct area that you're working with. So we're gonna need to do length times width of the open duct inlet and the duct work itself. So the inlet here is 10 inches by four inches and if you measure inside the ductwork, you have three inches by 14 inches. Length times width is 42 inches of open duct area. We know that the old furnace had an inlet of four inches by 10 inches. And we know that we're going bigger to four inches by 14 inches. So what I'm gonna do is use this dust gasket as a template and lay that right over the current inlet where I would like for the furnace to sit and draw my lines so I know where to cut. 
and go ahead and then build our platform. The current opening in the wall is a little bit smaller than the new furnace. So we'll go ahead and utilize a template and cut the proper dimensions to fit the new furnace. Apply butyl tape all the way around the flange of the outer panel. Install panel with butyl tape into the opening and firmly press the outer panel into place. Next, install all 16 one inch self tapping screws all the way around the outer panel. Now you can apply silicone sealant all the way around the outside of the flange. To prepare the furnace for installation, you'll need to remove the appropriate metal cutout. For this specific install, remove the rectangular one for a horizontal installation. When installing the installation gasket, make sure that the black felt side is facing downward and place on duct inlet towards the plumbing. Finally, install the furnace into the opening, lining up the insulation gasket with the furnace inlet, making sure that the gasket doesn't move. Now that the furnace is in place, remove the rear panel, locate the two screw holes, then insert the screws and fasten to the floor. Moving back outside to the furnace inlet, locate the two screw holes and install the screws and secure the furnace to the mounting platform. To connect the wiring from the RV to the furnace and thermostat, there will be four wires fed from the RV to the furnace. Two will be power and two will be for the thermostat. Connect the power wires with Wago or equivalent connectors. Then connect the thermostat to the two blue wires from the furnace. There's no polarity in these wires, so it doesn't matter which ones you connect. Now zip tie them together and store them in a secure area. Next, attach the RV gas line to the furnace gas inlet. Reconnect the electric power to the RV and turn on your gas valves. Once attached, spray a mixture of water and dish soap on the connection to verify there are no leaks. Now you can go back inside the RV and turn the thermostat on. Place a temperature setting high enough for the furnace to turn on. Now that we have confirmed the furnace operates properly, let's install the outer cover. First, dry fit the panel and the intake exhaust pipes. Once in place, install the four screws in the outer panel. Next, apply butyl tape to the back of the vent cap, making sure you apply it all the way around in a figure eight configuration. Finally, press the exhaust tube and vent cap into place, adhering butyl tape to the outer panel. Now go ahead and insert the six provided screws and secure the vent cap in place. Now go ahead and caulk all the way around the vent cap. And finally, caulk around the outer panel to seal the furnace to the RV wall.